Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today, finally, we are going to get to do our budget coffee lake build. Okay, so we've uh, assembled the parts over the last series of videos, and um, you've probably seen if you've uh, subscribed, and if you haven't, click on the subscribe button, click on the chime icon, and you will get notified of all the latest videos. Well, hopefully, if YouTube actually likes me, because I think they hate me at the moment, but that's another story. But anyway, this is where we've got to. So we've assembled all our parts, we've assembled most of them onto the motherboard already, so now we're ready to put all this into a case and get a system up and running. Now you'll probably notice over here is the Cooler Master Masterbox Lite 3.1, which has been the absolute bane of my life for a long, long time. Um, I was trying to use it with the Ryzen 2200G in combination with the GTX 1080, and simply it just could not cope with the heat and the buildup of the thermal waste inside the chassis. So that was what led me to try and build a low wattage, low TDP system, so I can actually use this case and hopefully use it in a quiet manner so I can use it as a media PC in my living room and also use it for a little bit of light gaming as well. So let's go quickly through the parts again, just in case you've missed any of the previous part of this series so you can understand the reasoning behind the decisions and what the items are. So we've covered the case. So next we've got the uh, Arctic Cooling free Freezer 33 which is a fantastic cooler. Now, if you've watched one of the unboxing videos or installation videos, you'll see why it's so good. Essentially, this has been chosen because if the system's under 40 degrees on the CPU, then the fan will basically stop and it will use passive cooling technology from the tower to keep the system cool. So, like I said, this is gonna be used as a media type PC in my living room, so I wanna try and keep noise down to an absolute minimum and when it's idling or doing very light tasks, hopefully the fan should hardly be spinning at all. Having said that, even if it does spin at full speed, it still is a very quiet cooler. So that is the reason we've chosen the Arctic Freezer 33. Uh, underneath that, we've got the IGO R3 RGB light kit. So in there is three uh, RGB fans, which we'll be putting in the case. Now, the PC itself is gonna actually be probably hidden behind the TV, so you're not gonna see a great deal of it. But with the R3, you've got the option of having the lights on or off or cycling through RGB colors. So uh, if the light becomes distracting, I can turn them off. Um, but if I wanna see if the PC's actually on, there'll be a nice glow behind the, uh, behind the system, uh, rather behind the TV, so I can see that it is actually on. And also, if I decide not to put it behind the, P, uh, behind the TV, and I decide to put it maybe behind me in the studio here, then at least it'll have a nice uh, illumination. And also the uh, iGo fans are actually quite good and will do a good job in keeping the system pretty cool. Uh, moving down to the processor, so we've got the Intel Pentium Gold G5400. Now that is probably the best uh, CPU for this task. It's uh, quite a high clock speed. It's got four th threads, but two physical cores, and it's only a 58 watt part, so it's not gonna use up a great deal of power. Um, and the power supply that we've chosen, which isn't on display here because it's an older power supply, is an older Novatech, um, I think it's called a, a Novatech Power Base or Power Box 400. So it's a semi modular power supply, um, but it doesn't have the required 8 pin connector for modern motherboards and it doesn't have the 8 pin connector for newer graphics cards. So it's not a lot of use to me for anything else. So I thought I'd use it in this build to try and make use of some of the older parts, a bit of recycling or upcycling, whichever way you want to look at it. Okay, so motherboard wise, uh, we've got the ASRock H310M HDV slash M.2. Now this board is a great budget board. Again, it supports all the Coffee Lake chips. It's got pretty much all the features you expect from a board at the budget end, but also a few nice features as well, like extra fan headers. And it's a very nice uh, glossy kind of, uh, I suppose it's like a, a graphite black motherboard. So with the side window in the case, with the illumination inside, it's gonna be nice to see a motherboard in there which isn't like a horrible color or anything. It's, it's quite neutral, so it's gonna fit into the build really well. And also, if I feel like upgrading this at a later date to a, a better i5 or an i7 even, then this board will support it quite happily. So that's the motherboard. 
the RAM, we're using Corsair Vengeance, which is uh, 2133. Now, the CPU only supports a maximum of 2400 DDR speeds anyway, so the 2133, although a little bit lower than what it could possibly use, it was very cheap. I got it as a bargain, so as part of this budget build, it's going to be included. So the last part is the Zotac GeForce GTX 1050 Ti. Now we're using that again because this is the mini version. It's got a, a large fan on a very good heat sink. It doesn't require any extra power apart from what it can draw from the PCI Express slot. So it's going to be cool, quiet, efficient, and also suitable for some, uh, some gaming, should I feel the need if I don't want to watch movies. So this, in my mind, is the sort of building block of a really nice general use PC with the ability to play some games at reasonably good resolutions. 1080p gaming on the Zotac uh, 1050Ti isn't going to be a problem. Uh, I may have to reduce some of the settings from high to medium, etc. But again, should be a fantastic building block. And again, if I want to upgrade it at a later date, I can do. It's got PCI Express 3.0 on the board, so I can put in there pretty much anything I want. I may have to change the power supply, etc. But other than that, uh, it's a very good foundation for starting a build. So that's the, uh, the items introduced, so the best thing to do now is uh, get on and build the thing. Okay, so that was a, uh, a pretty enjoyable build. It was very simple. Fortunately, thanks to the, uh, the Novatech power supply, the semi-modular, I've managed to do the build and I've used absolutely no extra connectors, literally the two that are captive on the power supply itself. So the 24 pin power and the four pin EPS, which I did manage to get away with using. Didn't need to use the eight pin EPS. So that's a bit of a win. Um, yeah, all in all, really good. I've taken the uh, drive tray from the front of the case, so that's made it have a little bit more room and also uh, 
reduce the block's airflow from the front two fans. Now, from the previous uh, B-roll that you've been looking at, you'll probably notice that the PC that is behind me, which is the same one, has uh, different colour fans in now. In fact, it has different fans altogether. Now, reason being, the uh, iGo R3, we put them in there, and they looked really nice, and uh, as you can probably tell from the B-roll, look, looked okay. But the lack of control over the speed of the fans was a real no-no, and because we're trying to make this PC as quiet as we can, um, the lack of control was just, couldn't do it. So took those out and reverted back to the uh, Asia Horse UAV fans, which are plugged in on the three pin connectors and four pin connectors on the motherboard. Now the uh, Arctic cooling coming to its own there. So I don't know if you've seen the previous videos, but I mentioned with the uh, Freezer 33, it's got the uh, extra connector on the fan, so you can do PWM sharing. So I plugged in an additional fan for the rear onto that, and the other two fans are directly connected each to their own uh, PWM header at the front of the board, so all three fans have got complete control, which is fantastic. And also means I can uh, have a play with it at a later date and try and reduce the noise if necessary. But at the moment, it's not very loud, and to be honest with you, the loudest thing in there is probably that Novatech power supply. Uh, it is getting on a little bit, so it might be the bearings are going in the fan, but other than that, it, uh, it's a pretty good system overall. Now, one thing I didn't mention in the, uh, the intro was the, uh, the hard drive, or the choice of hard drive. That was the Western Digital Green. Uh, this is a SATA uh, M.2 drive, not a NVMe or anything like that, just a, a nice, cheap and cheerful drive. That cost me about £40. So it's probably a good time to discuss price, actually. So price-wise, we're looking at 140 for the graphics card, 25 for the cooler, 50 for the CPU, 40 for the hard drive, and the motherboard was 55. So, uh, oh, actually the case as well, let's take the case into consideration. The chassis originally was 35 pounds, and the power supply, the Novatech power supply, would have been in the region of about 25 pounds also at the time when I bought it. So it's similar in quality, and I would compare it to the uh, Be Quiet power supply, which I reviewed previously, which you can check out from the links up there. Um, the only reason I didn't swap them over is because it's in my other machine and I didn't want to faff around with it, to be honest. But anyway, so that's the prices out of the way. As you can tell, this has been a really, really low budget PC. And it's worked out really nicely. I've managed to even overclock the uh, Zotac a little bit. So it's currently running uh, Unigine Heaven behind me, which previously in videos, if I was running that, that thing would be on fire by now. But luckily it's, uh, it's running well and temperatures aren't getting over about 54 degrees on the graphics card, CPU wise. Well, at the moment the fan's not spinning, so it's definitely under 40 degrees, so that's uh, looking nice and cool. So, all in all, it's been a, a very uh, a very easy build, and it's actually got a very neat build, and it's going to end up being behind the TV in the front room, so we'll watch some media and play the occasional game. Now, I have actually done some other benchmarks, so I will read them off the list, because I can't remember them all, because I'm uh, getting on a bit, and my brain isn't what it used to be. So, Battlefield 1, with the medium settings, all these are at 1080p. Uh, 60 hertz on the monitor, so averaging around about 60 frames per second on Battlefield 1, uh, Star Wars Battlefield, Star Wars Battlefront 2, uh, that was averaging a little bit less than that, about 55 frames per second, but really playable. Uh, Far Cry 5 on Ultra, we benchmarked that, now minimums went down to about 30 frames per second, which is kind of borderline, uh, but the average was about 46, so uh, definitely very playable. Uh, you could tweak the settings or reduce them down a bit to get your frames per second up a bit. Uh, Forza 7, now we test that on ultra settings and then we got about 65 frames per second as, as an average and that was a very similar uh, thing in GTA 5 actually on the very high preset. The benchmark on that we are averaging around about 70 frames per second. Lows dipped to 36 or 37 thereabouts. So uh, still playable, anything over 30 frames per second in my opinion is playable because that's what most consoles are locked to. Uh, obviously you expect a little bit more from your PC gaming, but anything over 30 I'm, I'm happy with. The closer to 60 the better, but hey, there you go. Uh, Overwatch, really popular title, that was averaging about 75 on Ultra. Uh, Assassin's Creed, now that's quite a new game, it's quite, actually quite taxing for this type of graphics card. Uh, that was probably the worst one of the lot actually, that was... Uh, Minimums again, around about 30, dipped under 29 once or twice, but I would say an average of about 30. Um, 
sorry, lows of about 30, and the average was around about 45 frames per second. So that one was actually quite taxing. Uh, PUBG, another really popular title. With that, we were getting uh, around about 60 frames per second on average, and that was on the medium preset. Uh, that takes us to the end, and with Rise of the Tomb Raider, so again, another popular title, slightly older title, uh, that one actually was really taxing in the benchmark. I've seen lows as low as 20 frames per second, which is not playable in my opinion. But the average overall was 60, so as long as you don't mind dealing with a few frame drops, then uh, this setup will do you pretty well. So that pretty much wraps up this video. Um, if you've got any comments whatsoever, please put them in the comment section below. If you like the video and like the content, then give me a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give me a thumbs down, but let me know why you didn't like it in the comments and I will uh, try and address it. So this has been the uh, bargain basement budget build based on the Intel Pentium Gold G5400 in combination with the Zotac GeForce GTX 1050 Ti Mini Edition. I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and we will catch you again in the very next video. Thanks for watching.